Thousands of people are killed or injured on the UK's roads each year and many of them are children trying to make their way to and from school. Shocking figures released by the road safety charity break have highlighted the school run as one of the most dangerous times of day to travel. Unfortunately, we know that hundreds of children your age are killed or seriously injured on road. There's nearly 16,000 uh, casualties every single year. We know as well that unfortunately there's five children killed or injured every single day. So that's a classroom for every week. About a third of those happen during the school run. So that happens between um, nine, uh, seven and nine in the morning, and between three and five in the afternoon. Dangerous parking, dark mornings, distracted teenagers, drivers using mobile phones and speeders are just some of the causes of the tragic accidents which claim so many young lives each year. And as well as working with bereaved families, the charity works tirelessly to cut the number of accidents on the roads through a wide variety of campaigns and by educating people of all ages on all aspects of road safety. We need to make sure that we've got safe places for you to be able to cross the road. We need to have safe places for you to be able to walk and cycle. We need to have slower speed limits, so if the unfortunate does happen, that a driver can stop in time and avoid that collision. And we also need to make sure that we've got options there in terms of public transport. It's very well for us to say that people should leave the car at home, but we need to make sure that people like yourself can get buses and trains that are affordable and easy for you to get there. But Mr Nichols said traffic calming measures alone are not enough to save lives. Things like that can work and, and do work, but as I said before, what we need to do is actually make sure that um, there's other measures in place. So there's something called the safe systems approach, which you may not have heard of. But basically the idea of that is that we're all humans, we all make mistakes. And that actually um, a safe systems approach is more forgiving for those making mistakes. So what we need is things like um, not just having humps in the road, but actually having segregated cycle roads and actually having kind of bollards between the pavements and the road and things like that. So actually if a driver does make a mistake, they're not going to injure yourselves as you're coming to school or as you're walking along, if you've got headphones on and you do make a mistake or you step out into the road, actually there's no cars there in the first place. Teenager William had a lucky escape when he crossed the road without checking properly first. I was walking to school and I was crossing the road with my friends to get to the sandwich shop and then I just stepped into the road and I got hit by a car. I just like glanced to the right and then looked to the left and the car came from the right and then I remember waking up like on the floor. I was, I was scared because I didn't know if I was hurt or anything because it's all like shock. I can remember the driver crying through shock because well my head had hit the window so she was crying through shock, oh, really upset. Fine, really, I've got a little cut on my finger. That's about it. It's a mistake William is lucky to be able to learn from and he's no longer hazy on his green cross coat. I'm a lot cautious when I cross the road. Like, I definitely check. Like all schools, Harbury Academy in Wakefield takes road safety very seriously. In year seven, we're going to be looking at road safety and how to make sure that you stay safe on the road when you're making your way to school, if you're walking to the shop or if you're doing any other activities. Before the school opened, its leaders worked closely with the local council to make sure students were safe on the roads in and around the site. It's something that is reviewed regularly, but assistant head teacher Sam Gibbs said there is a lot that students and parents can do to help ensure their own safety too. There have been some, some deaths over the time since I've been here. Um, I'm now in my 18th year at Holbury Academy. I have known students past and present lose their lives. I have known people be injured and I have known people um, have narrow escapes. So sadly, yes, it is, it is a problem. The big thing for me is at the end of the day and the beginning of the day, um, there are a lot more cars than there need to be. We put public transport on and people can walk, but parents picking students up actually creates more traffic and, and, and makes the risk greater. Um, and what I urge is that where it is possible to use public transport or to walk, that you do that. Um, where it's not possible and you have to have a lift, then shouldn't be using the zigzags and shouldn't be using the, the yellow lines. <laughs> Unfortunately, 
every half term I would say I get at least one phone call from the police, I get at least one phone call from parents, at least one phone call from a resident or a member of the public, someone that's driving a car or has been a pedestrian and seen some unsafe behaviour. There isn't a single half term that goes by that there isn't something and that's what either prompts me to do assemblies or to get the, the people in to do the year seven um, deadly distraction work or I just contact parents directly and just say look you know your son or daughter has been highlighted to me as not being safe and I speak directly to those parents. But budget cuts affecting councils across the country mean there is less money for things like lollipop people, which has been the case in places like Wakefield. In a statement, Neil Rogers, Service Director for Highways at Wakefield Council, said, For the last eight years, the government has cut council funding by 53% which means that £171 million has been taken from our budget since 2010. Local authorities do not have a statutory responsibility to provide school crossing patrols and as a result, a number of them have stopped providing the service in response to government cuts. Wakefield Council appreciate that school crossing patrols are important to our communities and therefore rather than simply withdrawing the service, a decision was made to continue to provide school crossing patrols but as a chargeable service for schools who want to continue to provide them. Some areas have already lost the vital service so keeping the roads safe for future generations could be easier said than done.